Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Stone Cold Steve Austin impersonator Phil McDonald here to tell you to go support Going In Raw and Friendo Club at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. They got bonus episodes, ad-free audio, a weekly newsletter rounding up the week in wrestling news, and a bunch more. Patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Go support or get hit with a stutter. Hey, friendo, Steve here. And Lars. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at YouTube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Available wherever podcasts can be found. And of course, tape live at the Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson. It's a very special episode of... Uh, our NXT review today. We got some news before we review NXT. And also, this is going to mark the debut of the Enforcers Level Up Review. That's right, after extensive negotiations, after putting together the most complex contract in the history of going in raw, we are bringing to you, at the tail end of our NXT review, Enforcers Level Up Review. We're going to bring this... Hopefully every single week, although the complex nature of his contract dictates he can take whatever weeks off he wants. Totally. Totally. You know, it's just if he doesn't want to do it, he didn't have to do it. Then he doesn't have to. But totally. it's that th- this time is set aside for him uh, to drop a level up review. Uh, if some of you don't know what level up is. It's the it's, this is great. So like when you go to WWE.com, so it's 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 what they rebranded to 05 Live. And now yeah. it's the, like the dark matches for NXT, basically. It's, it's essentially NXT's version of Dark and Elevation. Right, exactly. The great thing is when you go to like the shows section of WWE.com, you scroll all the way down, and like one of the last things is there is level up. Well, you know, when you go to the shows section, all of the shows in their banner, they've got the logo in the middle, and they got mm-hmm. all the superstars featured in that yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Level Up has the logo and then just dark clouds. <laughs> There's nobody in their banner. Man, what does that tell you about the show? It tells me. Well, I don't know. It doesn't tell because Enforcer is going to let me know everything exactly. I need to know. Exactly. About exactly. Level Up. So that'll come a little bit later on in the show. It's appropriate that if you're watching on the YouTube, the NXT uh, review today, especially, is uh, green themed. Now, that's generally because uh, when NXT 2.0 started, it looked like a Nickelodeon set. I mean, it still does. It's just we've gotten used to it. Uh, And with Nickelodeon, there's always that green slime. Well, today, green takes on a different meaning. Larson, would you like to explain? Sure, sure. (laughs) I mean, if you look at the calendar. Yeah. See what day it is. Yeah. Kind of answers the question. So anyways, with RK Bro uh, being a super popular act, these days, WB has seemingly been embracing, embracing uh, Randy Orton and Riddle's penchant for making weed references. Mm-hmm. They even released a new shirt, an RK Bro shirt today. RK Bro 420 says, I just smoked your ass mm-hmm. on WB shop to commemorate the day, but has the company actually softened their stance on the talent's use of marijuana? According to a recent report from Fifle Select, the answer is seemingly yes. Fifle spoke with talents who said that WB hasn't suspended anyone for a positive test in quote years nor has the company issued fines for marijuana use despite testing talent for, quote, everything. And I guess the earlier policy was you tested positive, massive fine. A uh, company higher up told Fightful, quote, I haven't heard, uh, sorry, I haven't even heard anyone as much as gossip over one of the boys or girls smoking weed in years, much less a fine being handed down for it. I don't expect us to come out with WB themed cannabis incense anytime soon, but the policy has been relaxed. And we used a lot of that culture in our storylines. Um, uh, Fifle uh, references Bret Hart's comments about uh, marijuana use uh, as an alternative to other uh, uh, pain-killing drugs mm-hmm. and yeah. the benefits yeah. of not using the pills and smoking weed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, it's 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 nice to see WB actually uh, uh, relaxing that policy. And maybe it'll lead to fewer wrestlers taking painkillers. Yeah, that was Bret Hart's main point is, um, God, I forget exactly who was referencing. I was looking for the quote here. Was it Davy Boy Smith? Was it uh, British Bulldog? I forget who it was. I don't remember. But he was referencing somebody specific and said, you know, yeah, he's taking a lot of pills because weed, you, you weren't allowed to, to smoke weed. And, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, clearly it's a safer, um, uh, 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 you know, therapeutic, I guess, 
than taking than taking uh, pills. Taking opioids, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, and uh, and obviously, you know, uh, uh, especially in America where it's legalized in so many states. I don't even know how many at this point. I saw, I saw an ad this morning appropriately. I was watching Pluto TV. They had old, um, on the buzzer channel, they had the Price is Right. No, they have a, the Price is Right channel. Mm-hmm. And uh, and it was when Bob Barker was was firmly dying his hair. It's like, bro, mm-hmm. come on, I know you're mm-hmm. agreeing under there. But anyways, there was an ad for uh, you know, hey, don't get high and drive because all these people, all these recreations of people saying, what? It's legal now. I can smoke weed and drive. <laughs> and I was like, I've never seen this ad before, but today is well, for a while ago because Bob Barker for a good number of years oh, did not dye his hair. No, no, oh, it was a more it was a more recent. The ad commercials are for today. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Pri- the the prices or whatever it is, the Price is Right was from the 80s. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, the commercials from these days, I think he's, is he dead? Did he die or is he still alive? I know he's not doing the prices right anymore. Yeah, Drew Carey, yeah, Drew Carey is doing He price. talk about transformations. That guy has gone through multiple transformations. Mm-hmm, Looks like a different mm-hmm. guy these days. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, that's cool. It's, it's look, it's more and more part of the culture. Um, it, you know, being legalized in so many places, being accepted in so many places, um, a long time coming. Because uh, it is a very, very useful thing to a lot of people. It's a necessity yeah. for a lot of people. Yes. yes. Um, for mental health, for just physical health, et cetera, for et cetera. Medicinal purposes, yeah. Medicinal totally. purposes, yeah. Um, so, and yeah, in the world of pro wrestling, it seems absolutely appropriate that uh, that this is something they would they would use. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that that's that's cool. That's good that WWE is you know they're they're on board with this. And yeah, I appreciated the uh, the RK Bro 420 shirt. I thought that yeah. was funny. Yeah. Uh, that that's some good stuff right there. Yeah, uh, we got some more W news before we move on to NXT 2.0, um, and this relates to them maybe being interested in even more AEW talent. So of course, Cody Rhodes has officially jumped ship from AEW WWE, but could other AEW talents potentially do the same? You know, assuming they uh, have interest from WB. So, Fightful Select reported yesterday that WB is interested in bringing back. Say yeah. Say yeah. FTR, whenever their AEW contracts expire, Fightful adds that FTR's AEW deals still have, quote, over a year remaining on them, though. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, I think we touched on this a little bit at the end of yesterday's show when the first news, the news first dropped. It was since updated with the contract information. Um, you know, it's, it's FTR is having ba- basically like a career year right now. They're oh, going yeah. everywhere, winning all the titles. Yeah, you know, and 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 obviously the their their first tenure in WWE didn't exactly end on the most positive of note. No, um, but you know, it, who's to say in another year's time if WWE is is dangling a huge amount of money in front of them? They've gone out and wrestled all the dream matches they wanted to wrestle. And if they get some assurances, seeming like Cody has, that they can be presented the way they want to be presented, you can't discount the possibility of them going back to WWE. It's yeah. not a certainty, but if the star is aligned, so to say, it's a possibility. You can't discount any possibility. Any after Cody, you can't discount any possibility. They are having, like you said, a career year. They are right now Ring of Honor and AAA tag champions. They will probably be. AEW two-time champions coming up mm-hmm. shortly, probably at double or nothing. Um, when is wait? Is that match announced for sometime soon? No, they they haven't even. Okay, so that's going to happen at. They got the FTRs wrestled Redragon first. That's okay. Okay, so I, I imagine that will happen. Um, yeah, I, I and 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 so by by the time their contract comes up, shockingly, I know that it's a big world outside WWE. I mean. The only other thing they really haven't done is go to New, New Japan. Japan. Yep. Yep. It's kind of or the Impact. only thing. And look, there's a lot of great talent. Yeah, they could they could go to Impact right now and they just hand in the titles if they wanted that. Um Yeah, I mean, look, there there's always going to be there's always going to be the question of what's their priority? If they're loving life now and they mm-hmm. hated life back then, then that's enough. That's going to be enough. That's sort of where you and I sort of stand on what we think about Mox. I would be really kind of surprised. Like, there are people I wouldn't like. Jericho's going back. At some point, he's going back. Yeah. 
Mox would kind of surprise me. Like maybe, oh, like same. especially not now, but a couple of years from now, maybe. But Mox seems to just love the freedom, and he seemed like he was being driven crazy exactly. in WWE. But I do think that Cody is a great way for WWE to show AEW talent, hey, we're not going to mess with you. We're going to we're going to give you a lot of money, but we're also going to bring you in and we're going to treat you right. And if FTR looks at the tag scene in WWE now and where it was when they were, you know, uh, uh, around, it's a different deal now. They they do treat those tag titles quite a bit better now. And with unification possibly being up for I mean, on the horizon, there's no possibly about it. The match is made with the unification being up for grabs. I don't know. They, they got some good teams here's, over there. They do. But here's the thing with WWE, and I'm sure they know this firsthand because they've been through it. Right now, a year plus maybe from their contracts being up. Yeah, you look at the the WWE tag team division. It seemed like they're treating it well because RK Bro is incredibly over. Usos are part of the A storyline of SmackDown. It makes sense for them to feature the tag division more prominently because some of the most popular acts in the entire company are involved in it. A year from now, it can be a completely different situation than it is now. Whereas in AEW, they've shown a pretty consistent uh, uh, impact for for that matter. A lot of companies have shown a pretty consistent uh, level of dedication to booking tag team wrestling in a very specific way. That would be it's a lot more fluid and probably always will be so long as Vince is in charge. So maybe if FTR is looking at WB now, thinking, well, you know, in a year's time, we could consider it. Assuming this is the situation, might be a completely different situation a year from now. And in AEW, they got way too many tag teams, anyways. They do. Like I mean, how FTR many tag was teams? Off TV for several weeks. They were off TV. LAX yeah. hasn't got the titles. The Lucha Brothers, they did get the titles for like a very short yeah, period briefly, of time. Yeah. yeah. Um, the entire landscape can be different in a year. That's yeah. always and, been the case in wrestling. And that, that, yeah, totally. But I mean, that, it, it, relating to AEW, of course, I mean, the, the roster in AEW is getting so large that to be prominently featured on a consistent basis is tough. And maybe they'd like to go to, you know, Ring of Honor and hold it down there. Maybe they'd like to go to New Japan mm-hmm. and hold it down there. We, we have no idea. But no, we have they were also idea. fairly diplomatic. I mean, beyond the whole clown costume thing, they were fairly diplomatic coming out of. WWE. I mean, I don't. They, they didn't seem to put them on blast more or less than you know anybody else to a reasonable degree. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I don't know. Like I said, a lot can change in a year on in the entire wrestling business, but that that could be said about that. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. A, a mm-hmm. lot can happen in a year, so we'll see what oh, happens yeah. a year from now. Oh yeah. All right, let's take a quick break here to get a word in from our sponsor, Better Help. People don't always recognize the physical symptoms of stress, headaches, teeth grinding, sleeping too much or too little, and digestive issues can all be indicators of stress. Yeah, having dealt with anxiety for most of my adult life, I can attest to the physical toll stress takes on one's body. I remember countless nights laying awake just stressing about a variety of things. But it's moments like that where you have to remind yourself that you have to take care of yourself and try to find someone to talk to. Having gone through that process, I definitely know how difficult it would be to find a therapist I was comfortable speaking with, but with better help, you can get customized online therapy that makes that process much more convenient by offering video, phone, and even live chat therapy sessions. So give better help a try and see if online therapy can help lower your stress. Right now, BetterHelp is offering Going In Raw listeners 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash raw. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash raw. And before we get back to the show, let's take a break here to get a word from our sponsor, Coinbase. So, Steve. Mm, yes. You know, I'm sure there are a lot of friendos out there like me who are interested in getting into the world of cryptocurrency, but probably have no idea where to start. It all just seems so overwhelming. Yeah, man. No, I totally get that. I was once there as well. But then I started using Coinbase, which makes learning to buy and sell cryptocurrency simple. Coinbase's easy-to-use platform has basically turned me from a crypto dullard into the crypto Lanny Poffo, a genius. 
It was a breeze to start my own portfolio, and Coinbase supports the most popular digital currencies on the market, as well as offering portfolio management and protection, learning resources, and a mobile app, so I can keep tabs on my crypto in one place. Millions of people trust Coinbase with their digital assets, so whether you're looking to diversify, get started, or just find a better way to get into crypto markets, get started today with Coinbase. And for a limited time, new users can get $10 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at coinbase.com slash going in. Sign up at coinbase.com slash going in for $10 in free Bitcoin. This offer is for a limited time only, so be sure to sign up today. That's coinbase.com slash going in. All right, let's talk 2.0. Um, we say quite often that one's disposition informs their enjoyment of a show. And I don't know, this morning, I just wasn't into watching 2.0. And I think my enjoyment level reflected that for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot in 2.0 I can salute. They're trying different things. They're, they're, they're developing new talents. And a lot of them I really like. And I, I really appreciate their approach to booking the women's division. I just... I, at least like yesterday's show, I really can't find stories that I can get myself really involved in. Mm -hmm. And so I can't really, right now, I'm having a hard time investing in the show. I'm on the flip side of that. NXT has been growing on me quite a bit. Um, I actually kind of appreciate, like, the, the, you know me, dude. I don't mind if it's bad or if it's cheesy. I love when it's good, obviously. When it's boring, leave me out of it. Nothing about NXT right now is boring. Um, I thoroughly am entertained, which is a complete 180, by the D Duke Hudson. I love to see him in the main event being super over with the fans in a role that fits him really well. As guy who is in an absurdist situation and, and he's playing it as straight as possible. I loved their uh, chemistry that we saw last night, him and uh, Dexter Loomis. I thought that was a ton of fun. I thought it was great seeing Roxanne Perez's uh, debut, seeing her mix it up with Toxic Attraction. I thought that was pretty cool. I love seeing our dudes from NXT UK pretty deadly, being a featured part of the show. Um, the Gacy Steiner stuff, bra uh, uh, Breaker stuff. <laughs> His corny is all get out, but dude, I love that shit. I love it. He pushes him off me. that thing. That's fine. He pushes him <laughs> off that thing, and those weird druid guys just go attack him. It's the best of, like, I don't know, 1994 WCW with the Dungeon of Doom stuff. It's cheesy as fuck, but I get a kick out of it because it's in 2022. Um, so... Yeah, I don't know. I, I I get you, I guess. But I also like how they're telling stories at a quick clip. Like, they don't mill about. And I love that Wes Lee got some shine last night. Um, them dancing around the whole situation was a little weird. But, yeah, uh, weird. But, but his story, I really appreciate. Um, you know, Zion Quinn steps in, says some stuff about, uh, you know, you're not, you're not playing it straight or something like that. Wesley's like, I don't even know what that means, man, but I'm going to go kick yeah, your I ass. What that, I didn't really know what that meant either. And then Wesley goes in there and uh, and he ends up taking the L because he's not in a tag team anymore. Nope. But I'll be honest with you. When I saw this dude on the mic, you know, talking shit to Zion Quinn, I'm like, has yeah, he, he's, he's, he's solid on the mic. Was Wesley. he held back? Like, what, was was Nash Carter holding him back a little well, bit? I think because it was a thing where, where MSK, the Rascals, were very specific. Things, they were, they yeah, were like right. Exuberant. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 you know and whatnot, and now he doesn't have to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he came off as supernatural and, and 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 actually really good. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed his his interview bit last night. I yeah. said there's a, there's a lot to like in NXT 2.0, and I said for a variety of reasons, sometimes you just enter a show with not, and not the right mindset, you know, to sit and watch a wrestling show, and that's just the nature of what we do. Some days you, you, you have an off day. Today I felt like this morning I was having an off morning didn't get involved in the show. And that's yeah. probably more on me than it is on NXT right now. There was a period of uh, months when neither of us were in a disposition to watch Raw. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that was that was largely circumstance because we had to watch it. We were we don't ha we didn't have to. We'd schedule it so we would watch it live and do the the recap right afterwards. Yeah. Circumstances dictate dictate that we were 
basically in no position to enjoy that show. <laughs> no, that show. That show dictated well, that, that we would not enjoy that show. I, you know, that I'll was entirely what, it. Our enjoyment factor would have went up at least 5 to 10% if we could have fast-forwarded through commercials and recaps. Like 4%, maybe 4%. Well, 5 to 10. I think. I'm pretty confident <laughs> saying 5 It was a pretty dog shit show. But, yeah, man, I'm look, I, I, I've... You know, NXT 2.0, it, they have gotten to a point where it does seem like everybody's having fun. It seems like, and the crowd wasn't nearly as obnoxious this week, and I appreciated mm -hmm. that. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I don't know, man. I, I look at it, and I'm like, oh, you know what? It's, 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 it's basically a solid indie promotion with uh, a bunch of WWE money thrown behind it. And uh, they've got their directors from, from main roster. Here's who he wants you to build up. And uh, and they're doing it and they're getting these 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 kids ready. But uh, but no, I, I, I like what I saw. I my only when I when I did watch last night's show, one thing stood out to me. I wish I wish that they had made Solo Sokoa North American champion off the bat. I think mm -hmm. that him coming to I think that Grimes needs to go back to what he was doing and needs to go to main roster. He was a main roster character when he debuted in NXT. Yeah, no, of, of all the. All so on the birth of 2.0, he was like one of the more over the top characters, you know, when he was, you know, uh, trading the stonks and all that. Mm -hmm, like yeah. He was a 2.0 character at that point. He was. Yeah. And now he's like become a, 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 a NXT 1.0 character mm -hmm. in this new 2.0 landscape. It's been really weird. Yeah, it is weird. It is weird. Um, and I don't know why that what, you know, so many other people have gotten called up and he hasn't, it's bizarre. It's, it's a little weird Yeah, because he's yeah. like, he's, he is main, like he's, I don't know, like six one or something like he's, a, he's a taller he's guy. Surprisingly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah tall. Uh, and he's just completely at this point devoid of personality, but you see solo Sokoa in there crowd is firmly behind him. If he'd have won that ladder match and then Carmelo mm -hmm. comes after him, you're talking about two potential pillars of the future. Going yeah. at it here in 2.0, that could have been uh, part something of it, really cool. Part of it too is is Solo comes off as so genuine. You know, he does this, absolutely he seem like he's playing a character. I know at all. I know. And granted, I have no idea what kind of a, a dude Cameron Grimes Trevor Lee is. Maybe he is a real laid back, uh, uh, soft spoken dude, naturally. But when he was doing the over top stuff, it came so naturally to him, and he it came off as genuine yeah and i feel like the story they're pushing now is supposed to feel genuine but uh, it just it just kind of pales in comparison to the character work he was doing before my this is completely unfounded and and and, and i it's maybe just uh, uh wishful thinking but it would be nice if this face turn for cameron grimes was to just sort of pivot him back to like the trevor lee that we used to watch like on impact and we saw yeah. him at pwg TNA superstar Trevor Lee. Yeah. Right, exactly. Because that was even a different thing than Cameron Grimes. You know? Oh, yeah. I, the TNA superstar Trevor Lee. I love that stuff. Oh, it was great. It was great. It was and so and maybe they can get back to that where, you know, it was more of a, you know, wink and a nod type thing uh, where you knew he was in on the joke. This Cameron Grimes is just, is just sort of boring. Um, anyways, let's just go ahead and uh, dive into it. Kicks off with a pretty deadly promo. We get uh, Braun Breaker making his way to the performance center, to the CW NXT two point, whatever they call it. Uh, yeah, I don't know what they call it these days. Yeah, uh, he's. Uh, they say last week we made history when we won the tag titles. Pretty deadly are used to having gold around our waist. We dominated in the UK, but we decided that scene was a little too drab. Yeah, boy. Yes, boy. So why not come to the US and take our take their championships? And it wasn't even that hard. We beat four of NXT's best in one night, which is a great way to put winning a gauntlet match when you don't have to face yeah. anybody. So then that brings out grizzled young veterans. Now, I do have an issue with how they're used because it's not nearly as prominent. They make a great point. And also, they're not called grizzled young veterans anymore, officially. Oh, do their they renamed tag team name is just Gibson and Drake. Gibson and Drake, okay. They, they kept their theme song. They did, and they're kind of picky and choosy about what because obviously pretty deadly kept their name mm -hmm. i don't know if that was their name prior to signing the nxt uk i know gibson and drake that was their tag team name prior to signing with wb mm -hmm. so i don't know if that's the difference yeah i don't but know pretty deadly gets to keep their team name but grizzly young veterans doesn't you would have thought if they were going to change anything it would have been their outright names like yeah no they got rid of their first names yeah but like they can still use those outside. So if they ever go to man, that's another act. 
I don't know why they haven't put on main roster, even as a good hand, but they can't even get any play on NXT. And that's, it's, it's crazy, I know. That's the point they made. Gibson says, shut up. Look at the state of these two. I want to know why we weren't invited to the tag team gauntlet. Drake says, yeah, we'd have dismantled everybody in the match. The only reason uh, Pretty Deadly had any success, success in the UK is that we decided to leave. Gibson says, uh, the only reason Pretty Deadly are tag champs is because we weren't involved. We're tired of waiting in the back of the line. And we're we'll A, overdue an opportunity. I'm out of, I'm out of practice with Mike Gibson. Yeah, uh, it wasn't that bad. It was good. It was he good. says, we're going we're gonna to take our opportunity tonight. So that brings out Legato. Gato Del Fantasma comes out. Uh, 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 what's her face? Electra Lopez says, uh, you guys aren't the only ones who want a tag title match. And then Cruz Del Toro and Joaquin Wilde attack the grizzled young veterans. Nameless grizzled young veterans be damned. Uh, uh, Brawl breaks out with all those teams. And then the refs come out to break it up. While that's happening, yeah, Braun Breaker yeah. comes to the ring. It says, Joe Gacy, you want to know what I'm willing to sacrifice? Bring your ass down here. With my dad's Hall of Fame ring, I'll show you which sacrifice number. Yeah. And then uh, Joe Gacy shows up on the Tron, on like all the Trons. Yeah, all he the Trons. He says, uh, I'm not a hard man to find. All you got to do is come find me. So that leads to a thread throughout the show where Braun Breaker is uh, finding clues as to where Joe yeah. Gacy is. Now, one thing I noticed, and some people noticed, is that Harlan no longer seems to be with Joe Gacy. Yeah. I wonder what the weeks. deal with that is. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, then we got a Santos Escobar digital exclusive promo. I think they said it was from Saturday. Um, and he says, Carmelo, you can call yourself whatever you want. You can never call yourself worthy. He said, uh, Carmelo was never worry worthy of being North American champion. He needs to get to the back of the line for the title. Uh, Mello and Trick, their response is next. Trick says, and Stan Deliver, everyone's been a bit confused. Grimes is calling himself the A-champ. Santos think he can hang with Trick and Mello. And Melo says Santos is in a league of his own, but to say that I'm not worthy, that I need to go to the back of the line, that's crazy. I'm the one who created the line. I am the line. And Trick says they took a solo Sokoa last week. I'll take care of Santos tonight. Next, they can finally end the Cinderella story of Cameron Grimes the North American title back where it belongs. And Carmelo says Santos will be the first casualty on the getting back the gold tour. So here's a couple uh, uh, notes of speculation here in our chat. Uh, favorite customer has my favorite one, but then a couple other people have the more realistic one. Favorite customer says Harlan split into many smaller hooded figures. Uh, Amanda yeah. Talk says, didn't Harlan recently get married? If so, he could be off TV for that. That I, could be true. I, I remember seeing like an Instagram post or something like yeah, that yeah, that he yeah. just he got married. So yeah, Nick Kyle also mentions Harlan got married. So thank you everybody yeah, for that. That 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 that, that would explain it his absence though. Mm -hmm. After that, we had a uh, Tiffany Stratton versus Saray. This time, Saray had her magical amulet uh, to help her out. Didn't quite get the job done though, and I was really seem to matter. I know I was so sad that Saray hit that awesome drop kick, but she totally pulled back on it. Because I don't know, Tiffany's new, and maybe she doesn't know how to take that properly. I'm just speculating. I just noticed that it was every time she was dropping that drop kick on somebody against the ropes while they're sit uh, sat down, wrecked them, wrecked them. And in this case, it just sort of like breezed by her head, and then Stratton sort of rolled out as yeah. opposed to you know bouncing off, which might have been the difference here. She also headbutted uh, uh, Saray towards the finish there. I do appreciate the corkscrew Vader bomb finish yeah. that uh, Tiffany Stratton has. It's very smooth looking. Yeah, yeah. Stratton's got some cool offensive maneuvers, but it was pretty surprising. Now it makes sense where Stratton beat Saray last time mm -hmm. because she didn't, you know, uh, uh, she to took her amulet from yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. But you'd expect Saray then to get her win back. Didn't Saray get the, very, the, the first win they did? Did, oh, didn't, didn't she do this with the amulet in the first place? Maybe that's what it was, yeah. So maybe they're one and one, or maybe not. I don't know. Um, because Saray is... Well, no, they'd be two one. They'd be two one. Well, overall. yeah, the, the other one doesn't count, though, because it's not... It's like schoolgirl Saray. It's sort of like a different person, isn't it? I think that's the I mean, the record And the record books, I'm sure, it counts the same. I mean, there ain't no records in NXT, dude. Yeah, no. Unless you're talking about uh, cage match. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll look it up. Um, after that, we see grizzled young veterans walk backstage. Braun Breaker just kind of storms past him. He's looking for Joe Gacy. He's asking him, 
Uh, have they seen him? They start to hear his dad's voice. Bronson. Bronson. Up here. Bronson. Over here. Son. So Bron follows the voice and wanders into a room with the cage and the chair and the rope that his dad was in and chair he was tied to with that rope. Yeah, dad's there's not recording. there. There's an iPad playing that segment. <laughs> oh, no. So, my dad turned into an iPad. Yeah, I know. Oh, no. So then Bron watches the cage, picks that iPad off the chair, and like, I don't know what he was doing. He picks it up and does this. <laughs> Do you notice that? He brings it really close to his face. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, man. He, he needed to know if the brightness was turned all the way down. He's maybe. like, wait, is this thing, oh, is this an audio recording? Maybe he's, maybe he's nearsighted. Because I, like, if I don't have my contacts, that's what I'd have to do. Is this. <laughs> He's so, nearsighted. Maybe he's very nearsighted. Bronson's actually 55 years old. <laughs> um, and so then he takes the iPad and like throws it down. <laughs> what if there's some really tiny writing on it? <laughs> and he looked at it and it says, fuck you. Could be. <laughs> and then he gets be. mad and throws it down. <laughs> could be. Could be. <laughs> well, instead of bringing it closer to his face, he could just do the, 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 the finger pinch yeah. and enlarge it. <laughs> do you, man, take one look at Braun Steiner. Does this dude look like he knows tech? <laughs> this guy does not know the pinching stuff, man. <laughs> oh, man, it uh, sucks these days whenever I pick up a magazine or something and I try to pinch it up. <laughs> I'm like, why is this paper not, not pinching up? Not everything's technology, Steve. No, you get a man. You magnifying glass out start reading your small, small uh, the print worst. Out, or monocle. The most annoying thing is so Lacey, like, I don't know, a couple of years ago, she got, or I got her because, you know, we were big Apple people. I got her like a MacBook, right? It's like a MacBook yeah. Air or something like that. Well, like, you know, I don't know, a year ago, I got myself one of them cheap old uh, Chromebooks and uh, and it's got the touchscreen thing and hers yeah. doesn't. So whenever she brings her Apple over to me, oh, I'm like, hold on, let me check. And I'm like, what this? Oh, I forgot. That. This thing costs like three times as much, but it doesn't have yeah. the stupid. Anyways, after that, we had pretty deadly backstage. They were walking past pictures of uh, WWE stars. They're like, yes, boy. Yes, boy. Yes, girl. And they walk up to Indy in Persian. They say, yes, girls. And then uh, Indy says, uh, he says, oh, you guys look better in person than you do on TV. And uh, Elton says, well, that's rude. Persia was wondering if we can ask him for a favor and pretty deadly. Oh, horny immediately. They're like, yeah. And they're like, we want to match. And like, oh, anytime, anywhere. And then uh, they're like, no, we're not, we're not talking about us. And then uh, Persia's like, we're talking about our guys, Loomis and Hudson. And uh, Pretty Deadly says, ah, pff, yeah, sure, we'll let you know. You're like, uh, uh, mm, uh, mm, we'll let uh, you know. Mm, uh, uh, and then they leave. Uh, then we had a Grayson Waller interview. Uh, he's like, yeah, I had the whole world thinking I'd actually injured my arm. I was so committed to this plan, this, 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 this brilliant plan to make myself champion, that that idiot. <laughs> I love his emphasis on idiot. Yeah. It was great. Uh, Sangha ruined it. it. Says, I'm too valuable of a commodity to have Sangha bring me down. So without me, Sangha is nothing. So Andre Chase walks in, says, what we have here is a teachable moment. He drops a quote from Ben Franklin, and he and Waller are arguing a bit. And then Sangha walks in, and Waller just looks over and goes, oh, oh no. no. <laughs> and then leaves. Sangha came in like a fucking monster, too. It, yeah. it was legitimately a small moment of being terrified because Waller, oh, no. Oh no! <laughs> and then he bolts, and uh, uh, Sangha looks for a choke slam on the on the floor. Waller escapes that. Oh no! I'm sorry. That's the actual match. That's so the match. He, oh, yeah, he Waller, gets out of Waller's there. oh no made me laugh pretty hard. Yeah. So then we get the match there, and uh, and uh, Sangha just is dominating this entire time here. Mm -hmm. And that's when we get the finish here, where Sangha is looking for a choke slam on the floor. Uh, he had booted uh, uh, Waller had booted Sangha onto the announce table. Uh, and then Waller escapes, drives him into the ring post, and then hits, gets out of the ring, hits that rolling stunner for the win there, which is, which is, I'm not a Grayson Waller fan. That is a smooth move, especially if you think about what he's doing. Like yeah. to leap over, like, the, what is it like? Is it over the second or first rope? I think it's between the first and second rope. The first and second rope. And then to, like, very smoothly do that, like, little the cartwheel or whatever, the, 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 whatever. And yeah, then the forward roll, yeah. The forward roll and then jump into a stunner. God damn. Cartwheel would uh, actually be a lot cooler, but the forward would roll be cool. is good too. I mean, it looks great. It's just it's not terribly practical. Like there's just a lot going on there, you know? <laughs> it's not that practical. Fear Loving says Braun uses Winamp to make his gym <laughs> playlist. Enforcer says he still calls a movie phone. That guy does not. 
<laughs> oh man, that dude's totally an Android user. Anyways, uh, oh wow. Uh, next we had Roxanne Perez video package. She was talking about how when she was young, wrestling video games, WWE video games, were her escape, and she would dream about uh, what it be like to get in that ring. And uh, she knew that the virtual world would someday become her real world. She's scheduled to debut next week. However, she has an interview next. Uh, toxic attraction interrupts, uh, and then uh, Mandy says to her. You know, don't set your expectations too high because you're never going to reach them. And Roxanne's like, uh, thanks for the advice. And then uh, Mandy's like, oh, you got some. Oh, so Gigi says, oh, you got some attitude here. Uh, and JC essentially says, uh, you know, you got an attitude. Well, let's see if you can back it up. Challenges her to a match. And then Roxanne, rather than just say, yeah, you're on, she'll say, yeah, I'll figure something out. She's good in the ring. Needs to needs to figure out the character stuff. There, there's mm-hmm. a lot of work there to be done. I feel. Um, what did you think of the little uh, the little <laughs> promo for playing 2K19? <laughs> She's a she was a WWE enthusiast. Mm-hmm. So much. So I, I would have thought herself. much more of it if she was playing WCW versus NWO World Tour. <laughs> See, I'd prefer if she was playing Revenge with some of our old characters that we oh, <laughs> used to make back in the day. <laughs> oh, man. She was playing, you know what would been great if she was playing that piece of shit 2K20? <laughs> and you see characters glitching through each other. I know, I know. she's just getting pissed off the whole time. That'd be oh, great. Oh, man. I don't know why That'd that's so great. funny to me. But, yeah, she's WWE enthusiast. She's she's a 2K, what do they call them, next makers? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. Anyways, after that, we had Legato Del Fantasma. See, dude, here's the thing. Even if you don't like watching NXT, it's always fun to review it because we just talk shit the whole time. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> she, she World Order says she's a 2K sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> That's her gimmick. <laughs> oh man, that's that's funny. Uh, after that, we had Legato del Fantasma versus the formerly known as Grizzled Young Veterans, uh, Gibson and Drake. Uh, this was like a four minute match. This was a yeah, was very, very fast match. Legato it got was the very win short. with their finish on Drake, and then we had a Santos Escobar promo because he had a match up next. He says, "I'm going to take care of Carmelo," and he says, "Tony D'Angelo, watch very closely." As a true leader handles his business. But before we got that match, we had a Wesley interview. And uh, they sort of danced around the whole thing. But also, all he really said, he said, you know, the last few weeks have been chaotic. He says, rough to say the least. He says, I've had a lot of doubts. And a part of me feels lost. And then Zion Quinn steps in. And he talks some shit. He says, you know what your problem is? You didn't play it straight. And he was like, I don't even know what that means. And it's, it's, I don't even think anybody else here would know what that means. He says, it just sounds like you're talking shit. And uh, he says, but now's not a proper time to give me a lecture. And Quinn says, it's a proper time to teach you a lesson. And he says, well, I might have some doubts now, but the one place I feel at home is in the ring. Maybe facing you will bring some peace to this chaos. And we had a match a little bit later, but first it was Santos Escobar versus Carmelo Hayes. Yeah, this was a really fun match, and they gave it a ton of time. Um, so at, at the finish, Santos tosses Carmelo out of the ring, hits a suicide dive on Melo, and then puts him back in the ring. And then as he's kind of, uh, that's after he does that, two dudes in suits mm-hmm. step up on either side of Santos, and the one from behind produces a tire iron, whacks him in the knee with it. Were you, back in the ring. were you expecting one of these men to be Fabian Eichner? Actually, I hadn't thought about, about it until you mentioned it just now. I totally was. When I saw, because I saw the video before I watched the, I, I saw the video on yeah, Twitter, yeah. and I was like, oh my God, is the guy like with his back towards us, because he's a bigger dude, Fabian mm-hmm. Eichner? And then I looked, and no, it's just two of the guys that have been at like uh, the Performance Center. And level up, yeah. Troy Donovan, I think, is one of them. Yeah, was, they were on the well, wait for the enforcers uh, recap of this week. Whoa, whoa! And he'll talk about Troy Donovan and Channing. Can't remember what the last name was. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so Mello hit Santos with the top rope leg drop to get the win. Afterwards, uh, Mello and Trick grab some mics. Trick tells the crowd to shut their mouths so Mello can talk. Mello says last week Trick took out Solo. So there's no one in my way. In two weeks, of spring break. You're looking at the two-time North American champ. So Cameron Grimes comes out. 
It says, Carmelo, you're sounding really confident right now, but last week you weren't confident enough to come out and ask me for a title shot, but that's fine. I'm mad enough that in uh, two weeks it's spring breaking. It's on. So little Sokoa hits the ring. He takes out Trick and Carmelo gets in Grimes' face and tells Grimes, I'm next, mm-hmm. or I got next. Yeah, I like the uh, – when he came in and hit that Samo drop, the pop-up on uh, Carmelo, man, it was so smooth. Mm-hmm. So anyways, uh, Braun gets out of an elevator, walks down a hallway, opens a door, and there's a room filled with a bunch of cheap mirrors to sort of put everywhere. Yeah, uh, He looks in one. He's like, what is this? It's a mirror. Whoa, it's my face. And then he looks in like another mirror, and Gacy appears to be behind him. He's and in the wall. And it's, he was in the wall. And instead of immediately snapping back to look and see that Gacy's behind him, he looked very like sort of like confused as to what was going on. But it's like it's a mirror. He's behind you. He wasn't Please. because he's got supernatural powers, but still, Braun's slow reflexes on that particular situation were odd, yeah. to say the least. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been an interesting pivot from what Gacy was doing to, yeah, now apparently supernatural powers. Yeah, I wonder how many more pivot. They're, they're just going to keep on pivot. He's going to go through all the tropes of mysterious guy until they until they find something that works, which they never will. So he's just going to keep on. They, they never find anything. Alistair Black, Bray Wyatt, like they find stuff and then they drop it because they just dig themselves into a hole creatively. And that you that's already happening with Joe Gacy. That's yeah. already happened because he's going to lose, lose, lose. They've taken years of of creative overturn. And managed to do that with him in like six months. I know, right? Uh, yeah, he's just the that trope. He's the supernatural yep. guy trope. Yeah. Yep. Uh, next, I like this bit. So Bivens was on the phone with Ivy Nile, and he's he's telling her, "Hey, Diamond has to have a presence everywhere, including the United Kingdom." And Roddy's the punching bag. He just yells, "Yeah, there's a re- she's there for a reason to dominate." And and Malcolm Bivens just rolls his eyes. Mm-hmm. He is so tired of Roddy's shit. So then, <laughs> after uh, Bivens is done on the phone. Roddy steps up to him and says, hey, last few months been a hard road for us. But uh, hard road, sorry, hard road for us. But that stops now. I'm the leader, and I refuse to see another group crumble in front of my eyes. So I'm going to start making an example out of people. If they don't agree with my vision for Diamond Mind, then they're an enemy of Diamond Mind. Ooh. I feel like Roddy's days in Diamond Mind get short. Sad last days of, yeah, Roderick Strong and Diamond Mind. Uh, after that, we had Natalia versus Tatum Paxley. Of course, this is set up last week in the little catering kitchen area, the kitchenette that they have there, break room mm-hmm. perhaps. I don't know what it is, the common area, uh, where Natalia came in and just talked shit to everybody. So uh, Tatum Paxley, within about, I don't know, four or five minutes, tapped out to the sharpshooter because mm-hmm. nobody, no man can escape the Scorpion Deathlock. Scorpion Deathlock, no. Uh, after that, Tony D exits the Performance Center. CWC, whatever they call it. Cameraman interviews him, says, uh, do you have anything to do with that attack on Santos? Because those guys looked as about superficially on par with the mafioso film trope as you are. And he was like, uh, hey, you got some nerve asking the Don of NXT, something like that. You really think that's something I would do after all the respect that Santos has showed me? Maybe it was a couple of guys trying to make a name for themselves. And then he looks over and Legato's very nice SUV is there. And he says, hey. Is this their car? It's nice. We'd see that car again very soon. Yes, we would. Uh, we got uh, Nathan Frazier video package. He's making his NXT 2.0 debut next week. Then we see uh, Indy with Duke and Dexter in the locker room. And Indy's like, hey, Duke, what size pants do you wear? And he's like, why do you want to know? He's like, well, you're a team now. You need to look like a team. Matching gear. And so uh, Duke says, outfit doesn't matter. What matters is the game plan. So he starts telling uh, uh, Dexter is strategy. He's like, I want to make, I want to take the fight, the pre deadly. I say we take out their legs, and he's like, mm, no, nah, Dexter doesn't like that. And Duke like, says, How do you know? And Indy says, Well, it's written all over his face. And so Duke's like, How are we going to work as a team if we can't communicate? Indy says to him, You got to speak his language. So she steps out for a moment, and then Duke just starts making a bunch of weird faces at Loomis. And then Indy comes back in, and is like, What are you doing? And uh, Duke says he's not saying anything. No, she said, "Yeah, she oh, says, yeah, he says he's she not, says, you're not, not saying, saying anything. anything. Yeah, this isn't going to work." And Duke says, "This is stupid. This is impossible." And he storms out. Yeah, irritated Duke is my favorite Duke. Uh, after that, we had Zion Quinn versus Wesley, <clears throat> uh, and Wesley he put up a good show here. 
but in the end, he misses a springboard. You know, they had such great chemistry that the idea here is you take one of the dudes out of the equation, Wesley has nobody to bounce off of. He, his, his entire game is different now. And so Quinn is able to hit that uh, the running forearm finish that he's got for the win here. Um, so, yeah, Wesley on the road to becoming singles guy or maybe finding a tag team partner. Who knows how that's going to – maybe he'll mm-hmm. – I don't want – man, I don't know. I kind of want to see what this guy can do as a solo guy. I can see Agreed. him there with Carmelo and, and Solo Sokoa, right? Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. could be really good stuff. Mm-hmm. Hey. Yeah, I'd love to see that too. I mean, I don't know. Next week they'll probably put him with Draco Anthony, though, because he's got a thing with Zion Quinn. That's I don't possible. know. possible. That's possible. Anyways, uh, we have Natalia in an interview – Talking about uh, how Cora Jade loves to play the victim. Had we done? Had they done the Cora Jade uh, video already? We talked about that. Oh, did I, we skip over that, or I didn't note that. There was yes, there was that, a. There oh was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened. It happened um, after the song of Grace and Waller. Match. Okay, so yeah, there was a, a quick Cora Jade video where she says, "You know what, Natalia was my hero, but I got no problem kicking her ass if she's going to behave mm-hmm. this way." She even has a picture of of, of them, and then she rips it in half. Oh, and then she steps on the Natalia part of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, it is sort of a response to that. Cora says, I'm sorry, Natalia says, Cora loves to play the victim. She says, but last week wasn't an attack. It was me acting in self-defense. She says, every single woman who blossoms in NXT goes up to Maine and they go and find me. So instead of Cora coming to find me, cut my legs out, I came to find her in her own home. And then Nikita Lyons steps up to Natty. She says, I heard last week that you put the whole rock locker room on notice. So I'm putting you on notice. So after I beat Lash Legend next week, I'm coming for you. And Natty says, you know what? When you're at the top, everyone wants a piece. But when uh, I have you and the sharpshooter screaming just like Cora, you're going to know exactly what to do. And Nikita says, don't worry, I'm flexible. Hey, now. After that, we had Roxanne Perez making her NXT in-ring debut against JC Jane. Uh, so towards the end, Wendy Chu shows up on the Tron, and she's in the Toxic lounge toxic attractions locker room mm-hmm. she's done a bit as she uh, as she calls it remodeling she's tore up the place and so of course this distracts jc as well as the rest of toxic attractions this allows roxanne to hit jc with code red to get the win yup yep uh after that we had legato out in the parking lot uh santos is like uh, i don't care about carmelo i care about finding the guys who attacked me they walk up to their car and there's a boot on it and they're all confused to what it actually well is. not a not like a boot you wear on your foot there's like with the boot on the wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, thought yeah. I see. I thought that was sort of general knowledge. Oh, it is. I mean, that's a general term. That's why I wrote. That's why I know it as. But I just want to make sure for people who might not know what a car boot is. Like Legato, because they're like like a, a, a Joaquin Wild runs up to is like, what is this thing? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's a boot. It's a boot. <laughs> it means you're parked wrong. It means you're parked yeah. in the wrong spot, buddy. Or you got unpaid parking tickets. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But in this case, it seems to be more like uh, Tony D's guys got to the car. Yeah. Also, there's a dead fish on the hood. Oh, yeah. And there, <laughs> yeah. Gen- now, you know, generally, but that is not something that shows up if you have unpaid tar- parking tickets no. or if you're parked no. in the wrong spot. Generally speaking, parking <laughs> enforcement does not leave pranks. a dead fish. <laughs> Car pranks. They're clearly playing car pranks here. Car the dead pranks. fish. Dead fish is a, is a dead giveaway for car pranks. Indeed. So uh, Santos says it's obvious who did this. Oh, well, that's right. Oregon yeah. Grinder says a car boot is different in the U.S. versus United Kingdom. Car boot's a trunk. That's what they call. That's what they call it in the United Kingdom. The trunk. There we go. We call we it the go. trunk here. Uh, after that, we had our well, main we, we get this quick bit with Joe Gacy. Oh, yeah. He's sitting in front of like a bunch of security screens. He's like a security central. It's like Keith at, at the, the DMV. PC. Yes, exactly. And so he's like, no, not there, Braun. I'm not there. Ah, not there. And he says, it's time. I end this. And he gets up and leaves. And then we have the main event. Sorry. Yeah. So it was a pretty deadly versus Duke Cuds and Dexter Lumis. Of course, the story here would be, can they coexist? And eventually they do. At a certain point, they get on the same page. They trade some thumbs ups, and uh, but uh, but in the end, unfortunately, because of the chemistry of Pretty Deadly, uh, they were able to get the win here with their was it what their oh finish? it's uh, uh, no uh, it was uh, big uh, boot uh, Elton yeah Elton Prince just hits boot on Duke yeah because yeah Duke punches Kid off the apron and uh, uh, then turns around and gets a big boot from Prince because Kit had had taken Duke off the apron when Duke was trying to get that tag. 
Uh, so anyways, uh, the lights come down in the arena after Pretty Deadly win. Spotlight comes up, and Gacy's on that the, the perch there, that platform there. Yeah, yeah. And he says, Braun's been looking for me all night. I'm not a hard man to find. So Braun comes out, yeah, walks up to the platform. Joe says, whoa, buddy, take it easy. If you wanted the ring back so bad, all he had to do was ask. He says, I'll return it with no problems, no tricks, under one condition. He says, Braun gives me a title shot at NXT Spring Breakin'. And Braun agrees. And then Joe puts the ring in the pocket of Braun's denim vest. He says, now that you have the ring, I have my title match. There's one last thing Braun needs to do. You need to take a leap of faith. And he just shoves him off the platform to the floor. And, of course, we don't see the actual impact. It cuts to him, and he's like, "Ah, ooh, my back. Ah, And then there's, like, druids surrounding uh, 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 Braun, and they just sort of they, they, they hover over him and start tickling him or something. I don't know or what they're doing. He just goes, ah, ah, get off. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah, they weren't like kicking or throwing hands or anything. They were just moving around it was weird. kind of like hovering over him. It was like they were doing a little huddle dance over him because they were kind of going from side to side. And I don't know. Maybe he's claustrophobic. Who knows? Maybe. I don't know. And then and Gacy just stands at the top of that platform and just watches it with a smile on his face. They just started it. coughing all over him. He's like, oh, no, it'll be gross. Anyways, uh, it's that time, Larson. Before we answer some questions, it's time for the debut of the level up review from the Enforcer. Enforcer, take it away. And by the way, chat, make sure, let me know that you can hear the audio here. You should be good. So here we go. Uh, Enforcer's level up review. Hey, friendos, how's it going? It's the Enforcer here with the review nobody asked for. It is time for the NXT level up lowdown. Now this one right here, three matches here. First one started with Roxanne Perez versus Sloan Jacobs. Ring of Honor fans will know uh, Roxanne Perez as the former Roxy uh, ROH Women's Champion. Now she came out in a beautiful purple flannel gear that looked absolutely amazing. She looked like she belonged. The crowd was deeply behind her. Uh, wrestling uh, Sloan Jacobs. Sloan Jacobs. This match right here, the backstory here was Roxanne Perez was uh, had a little cameo on Total Divas where she ran into Natalia asking for some advice. Uh, actually, Sloan Jacobs wanted to get into wrestling much uh, earlier than she had uh, uh, gotten into because her parents didn't want her to get into it. Now she feels that she's in the NXT system. Now she is on equal footing. She's able to learn exactly the same as everybody else. This match right here, uh, um, I'm just going to run down to, to the finish where it had uh, Roxanne Perez. Uh, she hit a side Russian leg sweep into sort of a stalling, twisted backflip handstand sort of thing. So it was like a twisted bliss, but it was a 180 on the ground. And then she like went backwards and then did the 180 on top of Sloan into a finisher, which was like a stalling Canadian destroyer. So she got up when she was on, on top of Sloan. She sort of did a preen, and then she completed the move. One, two, three. Roxanne looked amazing. Sloan Perez, or sorry, Sloan Jacobs, she gets some reps. Going to be good. Uh, second match, we had Damon Kemp versus Troy Donovan coming out with his tag team partner, Channing Loren. Now, the backstory here with Troy... And Channing is, Troy is a farm boy, Channing is a city boy. The only time really that um, any um, action or or offense was done by Troy was uh, through the uh, distractions of Channing on the outside to Damon Kemp. Um, Two spots I want to hit. The only time that Damon Kemp got any offense, like I said, led to a Falcons arrow, which looked good, and then went into a what was supposed to be a crossbody splash from the top rope but Troy Donovan he went three quarters of the way across the ring and Damon Kemp he could have just laid there and he would have overshot him by two or three feet I thought that was funny down the finish um, Damon handled uh, um, Channing Loren again sort of gave him a shoulder charge off of the apron led into a finisher which was uh, this sort of pedigree position and then he lifted the dude up into a neck breaker looks sweet uh, Damon Kemp, I am looking forward to every match he has. He's got he's got it. And if his brother has anything that Damon Kemp has, because this is the younger son of Gable or Gabe, younger brother of Gable Steveson, 
Um, I think he's got big things going on right there. And our main event of the evening. Now, I say main event here because the only reason why it was positioned as such was because we had an Ivy Nile um, uh, stood on the uh, the apron, or not the apron, but I guess where the stage would have been back in the days, basically at the entrance, right? So since she's a mainstay on 2.0, um, I, I guess they gave her um, um, billing here, or top billing here, but it was Kiana James versus Tatum Paxley. Tatum Paxley was Ivy Nile's tag team partner in the uh, Dusty Cup, uh, about a month ago, and also there have been some vignettes of her trying to uh, uh, make her place in Diamond Mine, cleaning up the gym and whatnot, and then Ivy got into her face. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, in this week's episode of NXT 2.0, unless something changed, uh, 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 Tatum uh, Paxley fought uh, Natalia. so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, early on, it was back and forth. Every time... Tatum uh, Paxley would do a, a offensive move. She would look over to Ivy Nile up on the entrance. No selling her for everything. Uh, let's see. What was the finish here? Once again, another one of these like sort of like twisted backflip 180 things. So it was like a twisted bliss, but on the ground into a 180 that led to a finisher, which is weird because... Roxana Perez earlier used that somewhat same move as a setup to her finisher. This one was just straight up the finisher. Tatum gets the one, two, three, looks at Ivy. Ivy no sells it. We end let level up. We're done. Thank you so much for watching. YouTube.com forward slash enforcer Stevie Bradley for my channel. Of course, Friendo Club TV. Wrestle Juice, Going In Raw, Wrestle Farts, you know what it's about. Steven Larson, take it away. Back to you guys. Have a good one. Thank you, Enforcer. I really like... See, what I, like, what I like about the idea of Level Up is this is where they build character. They start yeah, right. to put yeah. the, 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 the first kind of uh, touches on who these characters are going to be. This yeah. is where we learn who these people are. You know what, Enforcer, yeah. just fill in that in for us, and I oh, appreciate that. You know what I love about it is that five minutes of this podcast i could just not say anything mm -hmm. that's what i like about it i more of that to be honest with you just load something up and i just sit here and look at you know my my instagram or whatever yeah it's kind of totally. great so thank you enforcer for that we appreciate it look man, it's it's crazy dude we went from just reviewing the basics now on fridays of course the new way we've got uk and impact now here mm -hmm. on the nxt review we've got level up is there anything we don't cover larson don't we answer that question. All the, Don't the road to New Japan shows. There's Don't stardom. There's a lot. Um, there's a, tons, a, a, tons. a pro wrestling Noah. So much. All Japan pro wrestling. Dragon Gate. Um, Noah. Yeah, I said Noah already. Noah. Noah. Action Coast Wrestling. Oh, pff, what are you talking about? We're going to start June 16th. Action Coast Wrestling. It's going down. Who do you think the next uh, uh, opponent for Alpha Zoe is? I thought they said who it was going to be. Did they? I thought they did. This It was Journey for two this time. Yeah, that was a good match. Johnny Butabi's got his next uh, challenger for the Best of the West title. Yeah, That's it's uh, El, El Flaco. Flaco Loco. Yeah. Anyways, let's answer some questions while you look. What are you looking up? I'm looking <laughs> is, to see who are the results on Twitter. No, no, who Alpha Zoe's uh, next opponent is going to be. Okay, ACW. Well, you, you find that out. Uh, Eli McKaig here on the Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson asks, I recently watched a clip from a podcast where one of the hosts said that he saw AEW getting bought by WWE. Ah. This uh, El Chupacabra. That wasn't set up at the show we were at. No, but it was, it was, it was announced via ACW's Twitter. Easy day at the office for Zoe. Uh, he says, my question, could you see WWE buying AEW in the future or ever? Thanks, friendos, and have a great day. I don't know. Never say never. Oh, crap. You're Mike. I mean, ever's a long time. Oh. Um, yeah. Start over. Go ahead. Uh. You know, it, it never is a, or ever is a long time. Yeah, I wouldn't is. say never, but I mean, the way things are going now, I'd be hard pressed to, to imagine it happening anytime. Soon. 
I, I, what Triple H said is absolutely true. Well, number one, I don't know that that WWE. I mean, if they wanted to, could they? Sure, I guess. I mean, and they have the means to do it, right? Sure, but like, I don't know. Given that with the with the with the rise of AEW, I feel like WWE is sort of taken a different approach to getting their company sold. And I don't think buying up other properties is what they're going to go after anymore. No. So I kind of feel like, no, I don't, I don't know that they'd want to do that. But like you've said, everything changes quickly. Like things can change very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I think AEW has proven that there is plenty of room and plenty of money out there for everybody. If, uh, if you put the right resources behind it. I you know I don't I don't know that WWE would want to do that. I think it's far more likely that WWE would be bought by a larger conglomerate by the time you know mm -hmm. by by twenty twenty nine. I think that might actually happen by twenty twenty four. To be honest with you, yeah, it seems possible. Yeah. Uh, Fear and Loathing asked if Shane's son, Vince's grandson, Declan, who I think just committed to Indiana University to play football, uh, decides to become a wrestler. Does Vince change his name and to what? It would depend if they think there's more uh, uh, value in him keeping the McMahon name versus not. That's really what it comes down to. If they thought he could uh, make more money for the company being Declan McMahon, that's going to be his name. I think so. I, I would. I would. I would think that'd be the case. Vince loves his own name. Uh, Bear Winning says on a dot com interview after 2.0, grizzled young veteran said the NXT universe has seen the last of Gibson and Drake. He says, "Do you think that they're?" So Soon to be called up with the recent name change, or are they soon to be getting a complete revamp? Either or, it seems like. Seems like there's going to be, you know, this is a sad last days of Gibson and Drake mm -hmm. in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's that's a great question. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Uh, Reeves Clark asks, with the name, I'm sorry, with the news of Cody potentially bringing back the winged eagle belt. My question is, what design would you choose to bring back for each of the main roster titles if you could change all of them? So let's start with that one, the WWE title. You and I are both fans of the Winged Eagle. Yeah, it's the best one. It's great. Uh, United States Championship. Um, probably what it looked like in WCW. I'll be honest with you. I actually think that the design now is the prime one. I really like that belt. I think it's it not bad. It's not a bad pretty good. design. Not yeah. Bad. Intercontinental, uh, it's, it's the it's the one with the white strap. 100%. It's the one Cody brought back. A thousand yeah. percent, absolutely. Yeah. Um, tag titles. Something prior to uh, the when they the pennies, you know, the ones they have now. Still not huge on those bills. I mean, there's that Attitude Era, the Attitude Era titles. The, yeah. the, the I've never liked. I think any like the Attitude Era titles are fine. But yeah. I've never really been into any of the tag. None of them to me have been all that great. Um, women's title. The women's title is prime now. Yeah. It's the, yeah. The, I would never like the. I didn't like when it just said women on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was kind of cheesy. And the mm -hmm. Divas title was interesting. It was unique. But like I think it was like a, a butterfly or something. It was a butterfly, yeah. Yeah, I'd bring for the women's title, bring back the one with uh, uh, Moolah's picture on it. <laughs> so, like the NWA belt. That's yeah, what it is. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I loved when Allison K had it. She put her picture on it. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, see. Here. Mayor Planet Houston asks Is it weird Roman still doesn't have an opponent for backlash? Are they going to have a problem finding believable threats for him to face? They seem to make kind of seem like at first it was going to be Nakamura, but then, and then they haven't really done anything else with it. Mm -hmm. Still could be, still could be. Who knows? But Drew has a thing with Sami Zayn now. Like all the other contenders, you'd think, whether it be on Raw or SmackDown, are all doing something right now. I think, dude. I think they're going to try to make a big deal. I think the main event's going to be title unification. I think it's going to be the 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 tag title unification. That's going to be the first time a tag team match. I think main events in a while. A while. I would. That's just my guess right now. But they're making that to be the big deal. That's sort of the Roman proxy storyline. Is hey, go out mm -hmm. and do this on behalf of me. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of feel like that's going to be the because that also could be a situation where I don't know. RK bro might break up. I I hope not. Uh. Xavier Gray says, uh, "What do you think the plans are for Wesley now that Nash Carter has been released from the company?" 
I hope it's to go on a solo run. I get the feeling they're going to put him with Draco Anthony. That would not shock me if they went to like a mentor protege type situation there with Zion Quinn being the common enemy. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I like to see what Wesley can do as, as, a, as a solo wrestler. I agree. I think that's how they should go. I just, I don't know if they will. Uh, um, he yeah. also asks, do you Sorry, think that Saray and Tiffany Stratton's feud will ever end? This, you would think, would be the end of it. You'd think so. You'd think so. Uh, we got a non-wrestling question here from Crank Zone Gaming Power Rank. These animated comedies, Simpsons, Family Guy, South Park, Beavis and Butthead, King of the Hill, Rick and Morty. Uh, I would go Simpsons, Beavis and Butthead, King of the Hill, Rick and Morty, and then I guess then South Park and Family Guy. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. Although I'm not that familiar with Rick and Morty, so I might switch that in South Park. Not that I'm a huge South Park. Rick person. and Morty is incredibly clever. It and it's and it's it's legitimately funny too. It's both of them. It is really smart writing. Mm. Um Family Guy always felt a little bit lazy. And South Park, I don't know. I just never got into it. All all yeah. my friends were like, except for you, were like, yeah, I was never really. Jeff into it. wasn't really into it, but everybody was really into it. And I just never was like, ah, fucking, what do I care? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Patrick will leave it here. Says you guys. I shouldn't laugh, but you guys need to cover. This is just an interesting request. You guys need to cover this Johnny Depp and uh, Amber Heard trial. It seems Kevin Nash is now involved. Ha ha. Hopefully, we get a shoot interview with him. Talk. So I read up on this. I saw some on Twitter about it. So what it was is. Uh, I guess Amber Heard went to some rap party. I think it was for one of the Magic Mike movies. Okay, and was taking pictures with Kevin Nash, and 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 Johnny Depp was was texting somebody, and was like, "What is going on?" She didn't tell me she didn't go to this party. She's out super late. What is going on? That's all I know about. And and Nash like uh, he witnessed this this situation or something. Like no, he... I said she, she was taking pictures with Kevin Nash. Okay, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And I guess he was seeing those pictures or something. Oh, wow. I don't know the full story as this saw something. He was like, why is my girl with Big Daddy cool? Mm-hmm. Why is Diesel with my lady? Diesel versus Edward Scissorhands. Who wins? Kevin Nash versus Jack Sparrow. I think I think Nash goes over in both situations. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you get rid of how you do like, you know, you not get stabbed by the scissor hands. But that's also like, isn't that like a, I guess, is that like a foreign object? It would be. So it'd have to be some sort of. Uh, if you have fingers situation. that are just blades, is that a foreign object? It's part of you. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What does the rule book say? Uh, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Brendan Monroe wants to know, is Solo Sokoa going to win a title in WWE? Yes, he will. Absolutely. He's, yeah. part of, he's the bloodline. Of course he yeah, is. Yeah, he could win one in NXT pretty soon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, everybody. That's going to do it for us. Thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Uh, Twitch chat, stick around. We're going to raid somebody. We'll be back tonight for our AEW Dynamite review right after the show airs. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Goodbye.